Hello everyone and welcome back. This is Recon Stewart and today the 476th is preparing to stand up a Hornet Squadron, the 510th and we are going to be hopefully looking for applicants soon and that means that we're going to have uh, check rides coming up that uh, people are going to have to pass before they are granted access to the squadron. So I thought I'd take a few minutes today to make a uh, 476th Hornet startup uh, video, go through all the ins and outs of the, uh, the startup procedures that we're going to use in the 476th. Now this checklist I have, I don't think is available to the public just yet, and it's still a work in progress, so take that for what it's will, or what you will, but uh, let's go ahead and get started. I've already closed the canopy, just to make things a little quieter so the video is easier to hear. So let's get started. Um... First thing we're going to do is go from left to right and make sure all of our switches are set appropriately before we add power to the jet. So let's come on down here. Our oxygen system OBOX we want to confirm is off and our oxygen flow we need to confirm is off. Now the problem with this is there's a bug right now where we'll start uh, passing out because this uh, oxygen flow will cut off circulation or airflow. So we're going to actually let it uh, there you go. See how it's starting to get blurry. We're going to turn that back on and uh, we're going to leave that on for now, but it is a known bug. All right, next thing we're looking for is the circuit breakers. One, two, three, four, all plugged in, pushed in. Good. Um, mission computer and hydraulic isolation switches to norm. Mission computer norm, hydraulic isolation norm. COM1 and IFF antenna both set to auto. There's COM1 and IFF, antenna selector, and both are in the middle position, auto and both. All right, then communication panel. Uh, I'm not actually sure if this is working just yet, if ILS is implemented, so I leave all of these alone, but there's your ILS manual channels, uh, and it looks like uh, COM2 and COM1 transmit, uh, cipher and plane. Yeah. I think I'm going to leave all those alone for now. Then we've got our volume. Uh, we've got uh, voice. Uh, let's see, I'm not sure what that one is. Uh, RWR, weapon, mids B, mids A, tack in, and auxiliary. And we'll leave those volume set settings alone for now. And then we want to go to Gen Tai, uh, guard down right here, and it is. And gain switch, we want to make sure is in the normal position, which it is. And refuel probe should be in the retract position, and it is. External tanks, both in the norm position, and the dump switch is in the off position. And let's move our throttle out of the way here and make sure our internal wing is set to norm and we'll set our external lights we want to put our strobe bright position lights on and if it were nighttime we'd add some formation lights but we're in the daytime so we'll leave those alone and then we'll use our pinky switch master switch forward to turn the lights on All right, throttles to off, parking brake is set. We know that because we can read the vertical words of park here. And if it was not set, it would be pushed in and the handle would be horizontal and you'd read emergency or emerge. All right, um, landing taxi light switch off, anti-skid switch set to on for shore-based operations. And we want to make sure our flap switch is at full, which it is. All right, selective jettison handle is safe. And landing gear handle is down. And canopy jettison handle is forward. Okay, let's go up to the center instrument panel. Master arm is set to safe. Fire and APU warning lights not pressed in. I think only the right one presses in. Yep. 
Okay, DDI, AM, PCD, and HUD are all off. Yes, yes, and yes. Altitude source, we want to do select. We'll just leave that on barometric. There it is. And attitude source, we'll leave in auto. Um, one and two will turn to off. And ADF switch is off. ECM switch is off. Dispenser select knob is off. And auxiliary release switch is in the norm position. Okay, standby attitude reference indicator caged and locked. IR coolant switch is off. And spin recovery switch is off with the guard down. Perfect. All right, let's move to the right console. Uh, we've got our four circuit breakers on the right wall, and they are all pushed in. The resting hook handle is up. And wing fold handle, we want to be in the same position as the wings, which it is. FCS cool switch, we want to norm. Radar altimeter, we want set to off. Generator switches, both in the norm position. Left gen, right gen, both in norm. Uh, battery switch is set to off. Interior lights as desired. I'm just going to give a little console, a little instrument panel, a little flood, and we're good. Um, sensors are off. Clear. LTD, LST, everything is off. And our radar is off. And then, of course, we have our KY58 panel, and it is set to off. And we could also preset, for instance, if uh, we briefed that we will be on uh, bill number four, then we could set four and put it into cryptid, encrypted. And then all we have to do is turn the on switch, and it's working for COM2. All right, so that is all of the pre-startup uh, controls to make sure that everything is in the right spot. So let's go ahead and move on and double check the battery. We're going to go to override by left clicking and we should see our battery shoot up here to about 24 and it looks good so we'll turn it back to the off position and then we'll right click to go into the on position and we're going to test our fire test A first. Right clicking now. Engine fire left. Engine fire left. Engine fire right. Engine fire right. APU fire. APU fire. Bleed air left. Bleed air left. Bleed air right. Bleed air right. That's good. All right, let's turn the battery back off. Let it rest for just a second, and then we'll do uh, test B. Left click. Engine fire left. Engine fire left. Engine fire right. Engine fire right. APU fire. APU fire. Bleed air left. Bleed air left. Bleed air right. Bleed air right. Okay. Then we want to come down and make sure that our APU accumulator light is off, which it is. And let's turn on our APU. We're going to wait for the red, or excuse me, the green ready light to come on. And once it does, we will hit our engine crank, right click to turn the right engine crank on. And then once our RPMs get above 20, we'll move the right throttle off of the detent into idle. And now, we're going to wait for the GPWS voice alerts. Roger. 
Roll left. Roll left. Flight controls. Flight controls. All right, that was the GPWS voice alerts. So let's turn on our left and right DDI. Let's turn on our AM PCD. Let's turn on our HUD. And let's make sure we can see our UFC by turning up the brightness. All right, now let's check our IFE. We want to make sure that our RPMs are between 63 and 70%. We want to make sure that our temp is between 190 and 590 degrees Celsius. We're at 321. We want to make sure that our fuel flow is between 420 and 900, and we're at uh, 600. And our nozzle should be between 73 and 84%, and we are right at... Uh, 60, 70, we're right at 80%, so we're good. And then our oil pressure is between 45 and 110 PSI, and we're at 60, so we are good. All right, so with that, we're going to turn the bleed air knob all the way around from uh, uh, clockwise to norm. We hear some airflow. I'm going to turn that down. And we're going to check our lights. Make sure everything's working. Looks good. All right, uh, with that done, we're going to hit our left engine crank to the left with a left click. And we're going to wait for it to get to 20 RPM. We'll take the left throttle off the detent and into the idle position. There we go. And we're going to let that spool up, and then we'll check our, uh, our IFE here. While that's going on, I'm going to select my FCS on my left DDI. I'm going to stop the bit failures on the right. And I'm going to remove the uh, moving map from the HSI briefly. Uh, it looks like our engine is steadying. And again, we are looking for our IFE 63 to 70% on the RPM, 190 to 590 degrees Celsius on the temp, 420 to 900 on the fuel flow. We're at 600, 6 times 100 there. And we're looking for uh, 73 to 84% on the fuel, uh, nozzle, and we're at 80 and our oil pressure is at 60 psi and it needs to be between, be between 45 and 110 so we are looking good both engines look good all right so now we need to double check our waypoint zero and magnetic variation so let's click on f10 and find ourselves on the map and i've got longitude latitude enabled Zoom in on my position here and hold my mouse over our plane. If you look up in the upper left corner, we've got a uh, latitude of 3613 and a longitude of 115.02 and then uh, the associated seconds. So just remember 3613 and 115.02. We'll come back here, we'll click on data, waypoint one. We see north 3613, west 11502. So we know that our waypoint zero is aligned with the location of our airplane. All right, with that done, let's come down here and we're going to turn on the uh, INS. We're going to switch this to ground so that it can align, and we're also going to turn our radar on. And with that done, we're going to come up here and check our FCS. We see we've got some faults. So we're going to come down and remove those X's, those faults. We're going to hit our reset button, FCS reset. And when we look back up here, all of our faults are gone. All right. So now we're going to move our flaps to half. And we're going to do an FCS initiated bit test. In order to do that, we have to hold 
the bit test switch right here, FCS bit switch up. And simultaneously, we have to click on the FCS MC OSB right here, which is OSB 5. So in order to do this, you have to bind this uh, switch here to a keyboard command. Uh, and I believe its default is Y. So we're going to hold Y, and then we're going to come over to our right DDI. We're going to hit FCSMC, and then we're going to hit the OSB5 one more time to start the test. All the while, I was holding the Y key in order to keep that bit test switch up. All right, so we're in test. We'll wait for our audible cues. There we go. Test is good. It says go. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do is set our trim. We're going to come down here to the trim. And we're going to push our uh, takeoff trim button. And we're going to hold that and we're going to look up at our left DDI and uh, we do see that it does say trim uh, right there in the left corner. So we'll release that. And we are trimmed out. And just so everyone, I'm going to move my uh, right DDI to checklist now and my left DDI to the HSI and just so everyone knows it's going to be 12 degrees on the stabilizers when you're doing a takeoff on shore based operations and then it'll be weight based on carriers uh, 16, 17 or 19 depending on how much your Hornet weighs uh, when it uh, hooks up to the catapult alright so let's move our flaps to auto and let's check our flight controls. Make sure all of our flight surfaces are working. Rudder. Ailerons, elevators, everything looks good. Move our flaps to half. And make sure our trim is set to 12 degrees for shore-based operations. It is. All right. Next thing we're going to do is check... All of our uh, controls for the aerial refueling probe, the speed brake, the launch bar, the arresting hook, and pedo heat. So we're going to uh, extend the refueling probe. Looks like it's working. Good. We're going to extend the speed brake. And that is working. We're going to extend the launch bar. And we see launch bar light is lit up. We're going to put the hook down, and we're going to put the pedo heat into on instead of auto. Everything looks good. Pedo heat back to auto. Hook is up. Launch bar retracted. Speed brake retracted, and refueling probe retracted. All right, everything appears to be working. Let's go ahead and turn on our oxygen system, OBOGS, to on. And if this would be the point that we would turn on the fuel oxygen flow as well, but we're not going to mess with that since we left it on from the beginning. All right, then we're going to come down here on our IFE, and we're going to set fuel bingo. I'm going to set 4,000 by uh, manipulating these arrows to the left of the screen. If you hold down, it moves fast. If you just single click, it's 100 at a time. All right, let's go ahead and set our radar altimeter. Shore-based operations, it's 450. Carrier-based operations, it's 375. Let's move this up to 450. And there we go. All right, so this is the time now if we were to enter waypoint data. We would do that now on our HSI. And we'd enter in all of our waypoints for the flight plan. Uh, looks like we already have some pre-entered waypoints in this mission, so we're not going to do that. And we'd also configure our weapon system. We'll come here to Menu, Stores, and we'd set up our bomb profiles, our rocket profiles, anything that we needed to do uh, while we're here on the ground, get that taken care of. Once that's done, I'm going to go back to the HSI. 
and we're going to then come over here and go to attitude excuse me yeah attitude uncage and there we go it's uncaged and we'll make sure that it's lined up perfect okay and when that's all done we are going to check our alignment for the INS system and we look down here at our HSI and it says qual 0.5 okay time three minutes three seconds so we're good so let's go ahead and come down here and we'll switch our INS from ground to navigation and now our INS system is up and running and this would be the time uh, she would close the canopy as well but I had previously done that so as not to have a bunch of noise in here while we're making this video all right so we are prepared for taxi let's uh, see if we've got any chocks oh, we have no chocks so we're good so we will release the parking brake we will set our landing taxi light to on and we will engage our nose wheel steering with the uh, pinky switch, pinky button on the uh, uh, HOTAS joystick. And we will taxi out. Ellis Hornet 1 1 taxiing Foxtrot 2021 right. All right. And we'd uh, hit the throttles, hit uh, nose wheel high perhaps, and we would taxi our way to the uh, ramp where we'd get uh, configured for takeoff, and then we'd line up and we'd start the mission. And that will be uh, the next video, so let's uh, call it there. If you have any questions, please post them below, and be sure to leave a like if uh, this video was helpful to you. And uh, if you're interested in joining the 476th Hornet Squadron, we hope to be standing up soon. So be watching for that on our main webpage, The Recruiting. And um, we just appreciate you hanging out with us today. So this is Recon Stewart, and we will see you next time. Take care.